This video is a tutorial on how to weave a berry basket. It only will take a few hours. You can do this in a day. You could do it in an afternoon or you could do it in an evening. Around three hours or less that you could make this basket. A berry basket is a round basket with a handle. Usually it's a pretty good size handle so you can like slip your arm through it for picking berries, cherries, or grapes. And it's made from reed. Reed comes flat and round and oval and there's and they're varying thicknesses and varying, varying uh, widths. Reed has a rough side and a smooth side and you find out by bending it to see which side splinters more. The rough side you want to use as the inside of your basket and use the smooth side for outside your basket. I have a soaking bucket and it's round because usually it comes in circular like donut shaped things when you buy it. What I do is I kind of coil them and I take a, a wire hanger and I just bend my hanger and I hang them. Now if you don't have a bucket you could use a large bowl or a large pan, preferably something round. And you only need to soak your materials for five minutes. Now you don't put everything in at once. Only put in what you're going to use next. You just soak it for five minutes. You don't want to soak it any longer than that because then it will become weak and it will fall apart. It will rip. You can pull it apart with your hands. To start with we need to have a five eighths of an inch wide flat reed. One that is 50 inches long. This is going to be part of the spokes, but it's gonna the, it's it's extra long because it's gonna come up and it's gonna overlap and it's gonna create your handle for your basket. And then you need seven pieces that are 18 inches long. These are gonna be the spokes. We're gonna call them spokes because this is gonna be the base of your basket, the bottom of the basket. You're gonna be working in a circular pattern, so it's kind of like spokes of a wheel. Think of a bicycle wheel. That's why it's long. Okay, take the 50 inch long and mark the very center. Just put a mark with a pencil. And then take one of your seven 18 inch long spokes and mark its center. We take the two and we make an, a cross where the two centers are on top of the other. So there, the pieces are perpendicular to each other with the mark centers one on top of the other. Using three of the other 18 inch long spokes, lay them with the center in the very center where we've got the cross and this is going to form something that like, looks like a starburst. Using a number three round reed, make sure you soak for five minutes before you do this or else it'll break. Now you will have eight spokes, as in spokes of a bicycle wheel. The other three don't worry about those. We're going to add those later. But we just start with eight. Okay, we're going to begin twining. Using a number three round reed, we fold it in half, but not exactly in half. Do it kind of off center so one side is longer than the other. Take your loop and put it around one of your spokes, leaving about a half inch to a three quarter inch gap from the very center, from the opening. There's going to be an opening, a gap. Don't worry about that gap right now. It's going to be filled in later. Working from left to right, bring the bottom end up to lay on top of the next spoke. It also helps to rotate your work, keeping the part that you're working on furthest away from you. Take the top reed end and make it go under the next spoke. Always bring up the bottom first and then tuck your, your top going under the next spoke. Bring the bottom end up to lay on top of the next spoke. Take the top reed and make it go under the next spoke. Try to keep the spokes evenly spaced while working. I know at, at the beginning it might shift a little bit on you, so you might have to keep checking that. Repeat. Um, bring up the bottom to the top. Take the top, put it to the bottom, and just keep doing that. Bring the bottom end up to lay on top of the next spoke. Take the top reed and make it go under the next spoke. Repeat. Bring up the bottom to the top. Take the top, put it to the bottom, and just keep doing that. And, and work around in a circle. You're basically going to be coiling around and around. And keep those coils very close to each other. Don't, I mean, don't, don't pull everything tight. You want to keep that, that gap, that initial gap, that little triangular gap between each spoke. Keep that. That should be about a half inch to three quarter inch. Just go around and just keep going around 
and this is going to grow the center bottom base of your basket. Always bring up the bottom first and then tuck your, your top going under the next spoke. One of those ends, you're probably going to run out of, you're going to come to an end. Where you want it to end is right on top of one of those spokes, like right dead center of one of those spokes. So just cut it. If it's a little long, um, if it's too short, then cut it back to the previous spoke, right in the center. Bring a new piece of your, your round number three round reed and lay it end to end. Just butt the two ends together. If you want to use a clothespin to help hold that temporarily, and just weave like you've been doing, and just bring the bottom up first, and then move the top underneath the next, and just keep doing that again and again. As you come around, those two that are butted together, if you, as long as you're bringing your, your twining right in close, it's going to hold it all together and you won't even be able to tell that it's a end in piece and a stop, a starting piece, it, because it'll just be blended together very nicely. You will continue spiraling around in the same manner. Bring up the bottom, then move the top to the bottom of the next spoke and, and check it every now and then. And try to keep it a perfect circle. Um, you know, if you make it too tight on one, at one side and too loose on one side, it's going to give you kind of an odd shape. So just try to keep it even all the way around. At this point, you may need to check and adjust your spokes, making sure that they are in the center. You can measure from the center to, to the end of the spoke all the way around, check each one, and if necessary, adjust them, because later they won't be able to move at all. Until you have a diameter above a, of about three inches to four inches, good idea to have a tape measure handy. At this point, add the remaining four spokes so that they fill in those half inch to three quarter inch gaps that we left from the beginning. Now you will have 16 spokes all together. Continue twining, the same way we have been doing with the number three reed, including the new spokes, working in the same manner as you have been doing until your base is about six inches in diameter. I've always been interested in basket making. I just thought the process of weaving was a cool thing. I used to play with a looms when I was a child. One time when I was a young teenager, I actually collected some grasses and I attempted to weave a basket, but it just wasn't working out very well for me because I didn't know anything about the process. The first basket I ever made, I had attended a class with one of my friends and it was so much fun. I enjoyed that class and I still have that basket today. Not long ago, well I guess it has been a few years now, it just time flies, I was yard sailing, which is a fun thing to do. I really haven't been in such a while. I need to get back out and do some more yard sailing. I came across this, all of these basket weaving materials that were for sale for $20. And I said, oh my goodness, this is too good to be true. Uh, 20 bucks, that's nothing. So I put down my money and went home with all these weaving supplies. And I was like, okay, well, where do I begin? So I went to YouTube and I started searching for tutorials on how to weave baskets and then I started collecting photos and I, I started a Pinterest board and the more I looked into basket making that I stumbled upon pine needle baskets and I thought, oh, you can weave a basket with pine needles, those skinny little needles? How in the world? And it intrigued me. And the more I looked at them, I thought, oh, they're so beautiful. They're so decorative and they appeal to my artistic senses. So I kind of quickly shifted from woven baskets to pine needle baskets. And that is my love, pine needle baskets. They take a lot more time to do than a woven basket. Uh, but that's where my mind and my heart is in pine needle basketry. But this is a different kind of a basket. It's very simple. It only will take a few hours. You can do this in a day. Okay, before the next step, we need to soak the whole basket. Just put your basket right in the tub for about five minutes before the next step. To get ready for the next step, while your basket is soaking, we need to pull out some 3 eighths 
of an inch reed. We need six of them that are 20 inches long. And if you want to have an accent color, you need nine of them 20 inches long. And those will be the colored ones. Or 15 of just one color, 20 inches long. It's nice to add a second color. And if you want colors, you can, you can dye read whatever color you choose. Of course, you'd want to do this ahead of time. And uh, when I dye uh, pine needles, I usually will save my dye and I will pull out some of the reed and I'll dye it also with the same dye so that I can have some different colors to work with. Six 20 inch long and nine of a colored 20 inch long. Now I wanted to soak them before I use them. So I take, we take our basket out of the water and you can put the uncolored ones in your bucket. Now with your colored ones, you may want a separate container to put them in because sometimes when you're soaking the colored or dyed reed, some of the ink is gonna, is gonna leak out and you don't want it to color everything. So uh, do it separately. Since we're gonna start with three of the reed, at the beginning and then we're going to do nine of the colored and then we're going to finish with three of the non-colored so you might want to just put three of them in the bucket and let them get soaked while we do this next step now it's time to upset the stakes they're called stakes when they're vertical when they go up and down you know like stakes of a fence or stakes for putting down when you set up a tent stakes because they're going up and down so the spokes now become stakes we need to fold them and we fold them in towards the center. You might hear a tiny little snap. Don't freak out. You soaked it. Uh, it should just do fine. It won't break. You might hear a little bit of a snap. If you don't soak it, it's, it may break and then you may have to start all over. <laughs> no. Well, there, there are ways to deal with broken parts, but I'm not going to deal with that right now. We have folded all of our stakes so that they are folded towards the center. This just prepares them so that they're going to stand upright. All right, now let's take our three non-colored 20 inch, 3 eighths of an inch reed out of our water and we're gonna start using them. We're gonna start the first row on the inside center of a stake, weaving under the first spoke and then over the next, working around the sides of the basket, over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way around. When we come back to the beginning, we're going to overlap the two ends. So one of those ends needs to tuck behind the other ends. You want to make sure that those ends are not going to be seen. Okay, once they're, one goes over the other. So yeah, it's going to be slightly thicker at that point, but these are very thin, so it's not going to make that, that really awful thick. The trick to a good looking basket is hiding all of your ends so nobody can tell where the beginning and the end is. When we do the second row, we want to turn our basket about a quarter turn to start the next row because we don't want all of the starts and stops to be in the same side of the basket. We want to kind of alternate them around the basket so we don't have an unusual thickness on one side. And you'll just do the same thing. The next row works, goes in the same manner, alternating between over, under, over, under. And when you come around to the beginning, you, again, one end of it needs to be tucked under the last, whichever one you think looks best so that they are hidden. So we're going to weave three rows of non-colored. And I should have said this before. <laughs> While we're weaving the first three rows, have your colored ones soaking. When we finish our three non-colored rows, we're going to start with the colored rows. Now, because these are colored, they have dye on them. Sometimes that dye is going to bleed. So have an old towel and just run each one through the towel. And you're going to see that some of that dye is going to bleed off of it. And you might get a little bit of color on your hands. So after you do that, you may need to go wash your hands because you'll get a little bit of dye on your hands. This will prevent it from making a mess of your non-colored leaves. We're going to weave in the nine rows of colored reed and this is going to make a pattern. It sort of looks like a chain. I don't know what it's called, honestly. But having an odd number of the colored ones completes the pattern so that it looks, it looks cool. So we'll do this the same way. Turn your basket a quarter of a turn each time you start a new row. After you've done all the colored rows, we're going to do three rows of non-colored. 
That way we have the same amount on the bottom of the basket as we do the top of the basket. We've done our sides. Now we need to finish up the sides to get ready for the rim. Some stakes are on the outside and some stakes are on the inside. We're going to go around the basket cutting flush all the ones that are on the inside but not the handle, those two extra long ones. Do not cut those because those are going to form your handle. The outside stakes, we're going to fold them over and tuck them inside. So if you your basket feels dry, you might want to just very briefly, you know, maybe a minute, not too long, because you've got colored ones and non-colored ones. You may want to put it in the basket just a little bit just to we're going to take the outside ones and we're going to fold them over the wall into the inside and you're going to tuck it underneath so that you can hide the end and you can tuck it down as far as you want to tuck it but you want to make sure that it's going to come out right in the center of one of the horizontal bands so that you don't see it it just looks like the vertical stakes that are already there and if you have a little trouble you could use like a flathead screwdriver or an awl or a fingernail if you got good fingernails that you don't uh, worry about them getting broken or chipped uh, you can just pull it apart a little bit and, sh and, and shove it down behind you can kind of roll it between your thumb and finger as you you, you can work it down in there after you've done a few you'll get the hang of it so fold the remaining ones down don't bend your handle Leave your hand alone. We want those to stay straight. You might need to trim off a little bit so that it will it will be hidden in the right place. So kind of fold it down. Look at where it's going to hit. Decide whether or not you need to trim a little bit off or not. Because you don't want a little tiny piece sticking out because it just won't look good. All right, now for the handle. You have two long ends. Take one of those, bring it over to the opposite side of the basket, forming an arch, and tuck it down in front of the other one and you can put it down as far as you want it to go down. If you want your handle to be longer, you can only put it down like maybe an inch or two. But if you don't mind it being, if you think the height is good, with it all the way down, I did, I shoved mine all the way down. And you can look at my, my finished basket and decide if you think that's long enough. It seems to work good for me. All right, now before we fold over the second piece, we need to have a filler just so we can make this handle a little bit stronger. So get yourself another piece of the 5 8 inch wide flat reed and cut it so that it will it'll fit inside between the two from the top of the basket over the arch to the top of the basket on the other side cut it put it in between make like a sandwich and then take your last long piece bring it over i held mine together with clothespins just to keep them nice and together it's you could have a little gap in it but i put mine close together bring the handle to the other side and tuck it down the same as you tucked the last one so that they match up good. Now for the rim row. We're going to be using a flat oval. It's flat on one side and oval. It's a little bit thicker. A half inch wide round flat. It's called a round flat because one side is rounded and one side is flat. And we want to measure and cut it so it's going to go around the diameter of the basket. We need two pieces, one for the inside and one for the outside. The outside piece is going to be a little longer, the inside piece is going to be a little bit shorter. We want both ends to overlap. Don't forget to soak them before we use it. You might want to cut them a little bit longer than you think and then we'll cut them as need be. So put them in the water, let them soak for five minutes. If you don't want them to be too thick when they overlap, you can reduce the thickness one side you would reduce the top the other side you would reduce the, the underside so that when they overlap there'll be less thickness there if you like the idea of that you can use a knife i could not find my craft knife it's uh, temporarily misplaced the last craft knife i had my cats took the blade and it, i think it's under my refrigerator okay this one was on my card making table and i went to look for it and i couldn't find it so i've got to search for my knife they're always taking stuff off my desk i really don't want them playing with the knife i should have put it back in its case so i couldn't find my craft knife to shave off some so i tried to use scissors which wasn't super sharp and then i used a sanding block to kind of sand it a little bit a craft knife really would do better 
Okay, so we have our two pieces. We're going to line up the bottom of that rim row, that half inch rim row, with the bottom of the previous row of three eighths of an inch that went around the top. Okay, and so that's going to leave us a little gap. In that little gap, we're going to put the seagrass. Remember, we were doing the sides with three eighths of an inch, but the the rim row is a half inch, so that means there's a there's a, a quarter inch gap, which we want that gap. I use seagrass uh, to go in the, the little gap. So I use a, a strip of seagrass to fill in that gap, and it, it just actually acts, adds a nice appearance to the basket. We're going to use two pieces. It's going to go from handle around the rim to the handle, stop, and then another piece, same, on the other side. So cut your grass so that it butts up right up to the handle. I like to use clothespins uh, because clothespins are not super strong. Uh, sometimes clamps, if you use a clamp, they're a little bit too strong and they might dent or put an impression a dent impression in your reed so clothespins actually work really good uh, to hold them and if you like and it's actually it will make it easier for you if you um, get everything you know in place the way you want it your two ends shaved your inside your outside and you put it together you can hold it with clothespins okay before before we finish there and then at this point if you get your your, two, your places everything's cut everything's ready and you've got clothespins on it if you want to just let this sit overnight that would be a good idea because then your pieces will dry and they're already curved right around your basket and so that way it'll make it a whole lot easier when you're working the la the last part as we lash on the rim so I can you know recommend pause this video save it go to bed and we'll finish the basket in the morning just a suggestion or you could just continue my cat likes to watch me whenever I'm doing anything with my hands and she sees things flopping and moving and she wants to grab it and play with it. <laughs> Lashing on our rim row with 11 64ths of an inch flat oval is what I'm using for lashing on the rim. The length should go around your basket two and a half times and that's going to put the finishing rim is going to have diagonal lines going all the way around your basket. Or if you want it to be more than that, if you want to go around twice, then you want to, to have the length five times the diameter of your basket. And I, I'm just going to go around once. To start off, we slip our lashing up under the rim. Under, we don't, well, don't want it to be on top of the seagrass. Seagrass is going to sit on top. But over the wall, the sides, the wall, the wall, the sides of your basket, and down under, in, and this is going to be inside the rim. We don't want it to show here. Remember, we always hide our ends. You can have the piece a little extra long. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about cutting that later. Bring your lashing up around the outside of the rim. We're going to be hold. This is where we're going to start holding the seagrass and the two inside outside rim top rim rows we're going to hold that all together now we're going to come up over into the inside of the basket and we're going to find a little gap between the stakes where we came up on the left side of the stake and now we want to come out on the the right side of the stake and so it's going to be an angular direction i guess you would say when you come to the handle if you want, it's an option, just for decorative purposes, you can make a little X. So you can go one way and come around and go the other way so that you have a, an X there. And I like to do that. If you plan on going around the basket twice, you don't need to do the little X because when you get finished going around the second time, you will have X's everywhere. Now I want to remind you, um, since we're attaching this to the very top row, what's going to hold this basket together? Remember when we took those outside stakes and we folded them over to the inside? It's those folded over edges that's going to hold that top row on. If you cut everything off, this rim row would fall off. It, won't, it would not stay on. It would fall off and it would take the top row with it. But because we folded it over, those outside ones, remember? We cut the inside ones flush, the outside ones folded over. That's what's holding it all together. That just ensures the integrity of your basket. We're going to continue to work around the basket in this manner, coming up from the left, going to the inside of the basket, and coming out the right side. You can use a awl or a flathead screwdriver if you're having a little trouble 
um, finding the gap. You may have to turn your basket in different ways to see uh, where you need to come out. When you go all the way around the, the rim, back to where we started, we're going to finish it the same way that we started. We take our end, and if your piece is really long, at this point you can cut off so you just leave three or four inches. Tuck it up underneath the rim, fold it over the wall of the basket but under the sea grass, and tuck it down under the inside rim, and you can keep a little extra length there uh, and wait for the next day after the basket's fully dry, and then you can trim off these these two ends that are on the inside of the basket right now. Now to finish the handle. You can use a quarter inch flat or you can use 11 64th inch flat to wrap the handle. Um, I chose the 11 64th but it might, because of the pattern that I used it might have been better to use a quarter inch flat. Start inside the handle at an angle, slip it down in. Everything's kind of tight, so it should be able to slip in there and it will hold it pretty good. It, it should be at an angle. You can shove it down as far as you can get it. And then we're going to start wrapping around the handle in horizontal wraps. And you want to keep these close together, right? Butt it up against each other. Don't forget, you need to soak that reed five minutes before you use it. You want to choose a really long piece so that you don't have to splice in new pieces. But I am going to show you how to splice a new piece if you should run out, because you need to know that. You want to start uh, your handle by doing several rows without any color at all. And this way you can tuck your colored accent pieces into the wreath. You can decide if you want to use an accent color for the design of your handle. Whatever color I have used on the bottom of the basket, I like to have some of that color in my handle. Um, sometimes that's not possible depending on the materials you have. The only thing I have the same cherry color is uh, the same thing that I use for my side walls and it is kind of thick I can only get two pieces across my handle so that's what I'm using because that's all I have I wish I had something thinner and then I would use three eleven sixty fourths and, th and then you have more design options and I could show you some photos of some previous uh, berry baskets that I made to show you there's different uh, designs you can do different patterns and you can create your own pattern you're not limited to this, but what I'm using today, I am limited because I could only use two. I decided to do a checkerboard pattern. And since I'm wrapping with a much thinner material than what my color is, I am having to do a pattern with two under and then two over to, to help it even it out so it looks more like a checkerboard. How to splice. When your wrapping runs short, you take one end, you fold it at a 45 degree angle, point, pointing down inside the handle on the underside. But the new piece, you, you want to slip it up inside a few rows of the previous wrapped rows, fold it at 45 degree angles, and try to butt those two 45 degrees up close together. I didn't do a very good job of it in this one. And then just continue to wrap like you have been doing. And whatever pattern you create, you just continue your pattern. This, you want to do it the same width of non-colored on the opposite side, on the end of the handle on the other side. When the handle is completely wrapped all the way down to the top of the basket, bring it around to the inside of the basket and then tuck it at an angle down inside the basket of the handle. And it should fit fairly tight. That will hold it. Okay, now for the finishing touch of our basket. The reed sometimes has little hairs. If you look at your basket, you'll see little little tiny hairs sticking out all over the place, inside and out, and on the handle. So I use a butane lighter to singe off any of the little hairs that may be sticking out outside and inside of the basket, and to cut them in your basket may be still kind of wet, so don't worry about it. It shouldn't catch fire. Of course, you keep your, the, your lighter moving, so you don't want to keep it in one spot because you don't want to set your basket on fire. <laughs> and now one more thing. Your basket is done, but check it. Sit it on the table. Does it wobble? Does it sit flat? If you have any issue with it not sitting flat, what you can do is you can put some objects inside over the rim under the handle and just kind of put some weight on it. 
and just let it sit there overnight. And by morning, when you take all that off, your basket will be nice and flat and it will sit very level. And that's how you fix a wobbly basket. And it will hold its shape. And then you have a berry basket to pick. On the bottom of your basket, sign the date, sign your name, and the date that you made your possibly first basket. And I hope you enjoyed that. It was a pretty easy project. And because the materials are relatively cheap, and because it doesn't take a whole lot of time, this is something that you can make as gifts for others. So it's a good, cheap gift idea that you can give people. Thanks for watching.